Well, hello, friends. I'm Anton Armstrong, conductor of the St. Olaf Choir, artistic director of the St. Olaf Christmas Festival and professor of music at St. Olaf College. I am delighted today to be able to share a bit of conversation with Alice Parker. Good morning, Alice. I, I did first encounter you as, uh, as a boy chorister in what was then known as the American Boy Choir and later even at St. Olaf through some of the folk songs, some of the spirituals that you said. Uh, Hark, I Hear the Harps Eternal, you know, I sing that oh, with yes. my predecessor, Ken Jennings, you know, in the St. Olaf Choir. And you always found a way, and I agree with you so much, as I've traveled the world, I've been blessed to do that as well. And whether it's PTO Sweden or Tel Aviv, Israel, or uh, Sydney, Australia, or Caracas, Venezuela, when I take the music of my people, those spirituals, those slave songs, but they talk about a human condition. Yes, they did come out of a group of, hu uh, of human beings who were treated with such disdain and subhuman treatment. But out of that, there was hope. There was hope, there was um, a perseverance and a message of survival that even in the worst of times, there is hope for a better world. And that's why I continue yes. to do that with, this, with not just the St. Olaf Choir, but as I do my guest conducting, because I think there, it's a message that people of all ages can relate to. And, and you've made that kind of a hallmark, not kind of, a hallmark of your writing. You've written many different things, but I think those are the pieces that especially will live long beyond the time that you and I are on this earth. I think that's very possible. That's very possible. Much more than the things that I invent that I may feel very proud of and whatnot that I have done, but they don't have this thing of belonging deep down inside where heart and mind are united, spirit and soul and all of us, all, every part of me is, is bound together. And therefore I've descended to a realm that is far below all of these differences on the surface down to a common place where if we get that song started in the right way in this room, we can make it blossom and bloom and Everybody is caught in it, even people that haven't sung for years, people that have never sung before, people that don't know it, people that are in a totally foreign uh, environment. They all get caught in it because it's part of our human heritage. Someone asked me once, well, why do we sing? What good is that? And my first answer is because birds do. God gives us the voice. Why does God give us a voice to sing if not to use it? Now, what we sing are the, the songs of the heart. What we see are surfaces. What we hear are depths. So when we're singing, we are working below the surface. And the more that we talk about the surface, then when we emphasize, well, there's this group and that group, and there's this advantage and that advantage, and oh, we should make up for all that suffering that they did before. That's perfectly true and it's long gone. What can we do right now that builds the ground for advancing together? Don't focus on the past. Don't focus on the future. Focus on right now, what can I do today that will open my heart to such an extent that someone from a totally different view can come into my world and we can have a civilized conversation. We're not sniping at each other. We're not calling each other names. We are saying, well, we've got to do something about the school because the toilets aren't working right. We've got to raise money to fix that. What can we do together that will get this done? So we have a common project that we're working on that is in, in the small scale right now in our own town, wherever we are, there is someone who's lonely, there's someone who's ill, there's someone who's just suffered a catastrophe. We, we just keep denying what our active minds 
tell us to do because we're so stuck in the past instead of looking at right now, what could we do right now to remedy this situation and make life better for someone else as well as ourselves? Alice, you, throughout our conversation this morning, you've been offering great wisdom, sage advice, but I'm going to ask you to be maybe a little bit more pointed. Um, Sorry. Any advice? or words of encouragement that you'd like to share with younger generations of choral conductors? I think your last point was right on mark. What can we do now? But as you think, if you had, uh, you have a chance now in this forum to maybe give some encouraging advice to, to, to a younger generation, what would that be? One of, one of the things that happened to me, not because I wanted it, but because it was the only path open, was that I spent a whole lot of time after I had graduated from college and graduate school and was thoroughly mind oriented about music, was having to spend time with children, my own children, and then other children where I was teaching piano or had little classes for children in my home. Um, yeah, if, if you leave out that first step of getting to know babies and preschoolers and elementary schoolers, particularly before they get to, into the reading music situation and into that other, when the page intrudes, that's a separate uh, bugaboo of mine. But spend time somehow with kids. Little kids are born knowing it. You, we don't teach them to breathe. We don't teach them to sing. They don't have to have singing lessons to know how to sing. They know how. I have granddaughters two of them, five and two in the same family. And one, when you ask her to sing, sings in a lovely, uh, quiet voice. And she, they sing very readily because I sing to them a lot. The two-year-old, when she sings, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ha, she's, she's pulling it out of her insides. But that's just who she is. But they all know how to sing. And the more that I make up a song with them and sing it with them or sing any of the old children's songs, or listen to them sing the songs that they're learning in nursery school. Um, we are sharing in a way that is underlies the whole human process of music education. Our education has gotten so page oriented that we are teaching music reading rather than music listening. And we are teaching accuracy to the page instead of accuracy to the heartfelt message of the song. So I would advise any young people in music to, to realize you have to go through this education. You gotta get there to get, get anything and it's valuable. It teaches you all kinds of things, but at the same time, find a way to do something with kids, your own kids or your grandkids or, or a, a kindergarten in town or something like that, because you will learn that those kids know the essentials of music. They know joy and grief. They know rhythm. So we get people just playing singing together for fun, not, not the learning thing. That may not be very helpful, but no, I think it's I think profound. It I, well, I do. I, you know, the early part of my years and even up until three years ago, I was on a weekly basis working with the children's choir. It made me a better yes. professor. It made me understand Absolutely. what I needed, you know, and I too grew up in a home with a mother who sang, you know, and in her final years when she had dementia, when the medication couldn't bring it back to her and bring her back to us, it was my ability to sing with her. And that last visit, and I've told the story many times. That last visit, when we were singing her favorite gospel hymn, he, his eyes on the sparrow, and I yes. sing because I'm happy, yeah. I sing because I'm free, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. That's what brought my yes. mother back to me for that last day we were together. So I know that moment, mm -hmm. I know that experience. My dear friend, I want to thank you so much for everything you have given. Um, Yes, through your musical compositions, but those of us who have been in your midst, and I, I thank God for the many times that you and I have shared time together. You have blessed us in so many ways. Um, you are so dear to this world, 
And thank you for the advocacy of just coming together, saying together to find our common ground. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Anton. It's been a pleasure. And I hope I see you in June at the Chorus America Conference. I keep praying that that might happen. I will hope to be, okay. I'll hope to be walking without any assistance and there. Good. Thank you, Anton. All righty. Thank you so much.